Steganography was in the news recently when Russian hackers used Instagram photos to control compromised routers. We'll explain how to encode secret information on an image or audio file on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Steganography allows you to hide information in plain sight, basically taking text information and hiding it in an image or audio file. Now the way this works is by first compressing the information you want to conceal, then encrypting it, and then taking a password in order to take the step further of using a pseudo-random number generator. What this does is it goes through and randomly, according to the password you supply, picks different pixels throughout the image, making very small changes that are imperceptible to the human eye. In the end, you have an image which contains secret information that can only be extracted using the same program that you use to encode it. Now, this can be anything from just code to maybe a whole bunch of text, or in the case of Russian hackers, it can actually be instructions for your malware to continue functioning or upgrading itself. Now, to get started using this, we're going to use a program, program called Steghide, and it doesn't take a lot to get started. You'll just need to have Kali Linux installed and fully updated. So, let's begin. To get started using steganography, we're going to use a program called Steghide. Now this is super easy to install on Kali Linux because the only thing we need to type is apt install steghide. As you can see, I already have it installed. However, if you were typing this, all of these dependencies would be installed for you. Now this can be really annoying on other operating systems, so I recommend that if you're on another OS, you just get a Kali virtual machine in order to uh, play with this tool. Now, we're going to take a look at this tool by typing man steghide. Now, here you can see a description of what the program does, and it's pretty interesting if you have the time to read it. Basically, the password you supply uh, powers a pseudo-random number generator that's going to go through and pick random pixels and change them. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different things you can do, but the main commands are embed, extract, info, encryption info, version, license, and help. Now, the ones that we'll be using today are embed and extract, so let's take another look at those. Under embed, we have the embedded file, which is a file name that will be embedded, the cover file, which is the file that will have the embedded file placed into it, and the stego file, which is the file that has the secret inside of it. Now we can also see there's some additional options that we can change, such as the encryption, the compression level, and then an option to either not compress, uh, encode or not encode a checksum, and then possibly not even embed a name, which means we would need some additional information to decode it since it wouldn't automatically save the name of the file that was hidden inside of it. Now extracting has a couple different variables as well. You can specify the stego file name and then the extraction file from within it, although this is mandatory if you do not have something encoded into it if you use the flag above. Now you can see a couple of examples, but in general, you just need to remember that the password is used to encode the file, and you'll just need to know the name of the file that you're trying to extract. Now we can exit out of this by pressing Q, and we're gonna go ahead and take a example file and encode some information onto it. So let's open up the information that we're going to encode. We're gonna take a file called secret.txt that has a spooky poem on it, and we're going to take the, a picture called fatbird.jpg. Now, as you can see from this documentation, when we type steghide, attack help, there are a couple of examples on how to use this tool. Now we're going to embed, so we'll type steghide, embed, and then we have a couple options that we'll need to use in order to embed the file. First we have tag EF, which is embed file, so the file to be embedded. For that, we'll select fatbird.jpg. Next, we'll need to specify the cover file. 
So in this case, we're actually going to use fatbird.jpg for the cover file. And instead for the embed file, we'll go ahead and use secret.txt. which we'll just go ahead and drag and drop. Last, we'll need to supply a password. So we can type tacp and then some sort of password. Hopefully something more secure than that. Now we should be able to press return and see that it encodes it onto the file. Cool, now that that's done, we can see that fatbird.jpg has been updated. When we click on it, it looks pretty much the same, and we can't really distinguish that there have been any major changes to the file. It doesn't look particularly grainy. To the naked eye, it looks very similar to the file that was there before. Now, it's worth noting that if I were to compress this file, uh, or if I were to make it much smaller or much bigger, that would destroy the information that's hidden inside of it. So if you upload it to a service that compresses it or otherwise changes the dimensions, you may be losing the data inside. Now, in order to prove this works, we'll need to extract the information we just hid. We'll go back to the terminal window and type steghide, and then extract. Now we can see there's a couple extracting options we'll also need to fill out. First, we have the stego file, tac sf. For this, we'll take fatberg.jpg. Next, we'll need the passphrase. Tac p password password one two three. After that, we'll need the extracted file name. If we leave this as default, it will overwrite the original file we put. So I'm going to make the file we write it to secrets.txt. And that should be all we need in order to extract the information. So let's give it a try. Now we can see we've written the extracted data to secrets.txt. So let's open it up and see if it worked. There you go. As you can see, I'll open up the original file and we can see if it matches the one that we have here. Yep, they contain the same information. This means that we've successfully taken this file, encoded it onto fatbird.jpg, and then extracted it from the same file. This means that if we had put code instead of just a poem inside of fatbird.jpg and uploaded it to the internet, someone or something could have downloaded it and then pulled the information out and run it as a command. Now that's pretty exciting for a hacker, and it's an interesting and fun way of being able to move around information without having anyone notice what you're doing. This of course can be automated, but as I said, you need to be careful for services that might damage the information inside by either upscaling, downscaling, or changing the dimensions of the image. Aside from hackers, production studios and recording companies regularly encode things onto their files to allow easy tracking of plagiarism and copyright theft using steganography. This can be just a small copyright tag or some code to let someone know if something's been stolen. Now in the future, you might even see bots helping other bots update themselves by encoding information into steganographic files, uploading them onto Instagram, and then updating themselves through that process. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any questions or comments about the show, make sure to shoot me a message on Twitter. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.